Okay, can everyone see? Yes. yes. Okay, so let's get started doing some fun postcards. I've got to, um, I said I was gonna use a Micron pen, but it's actually a Uniball waterproof pen. Use whatever pen you have. If it smears a little bit when you add paint, that's okay. That can make it just more interesting and, and give it an extra value. So first, this is not a drawing class and you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, I can't draw, I can't, I can't make shapes, I can't do this, and you really can. So first I'm gonna show some simple shapes I'm going to make, and then we're gonna take those shapes and make all kinds of cute postcards. Now how I draw when I'm doing like line and wash or really almost any kind of drawing is I hold the pen towards the end because I don't want to be very precise. I don't think precise drawing in very loose watercolor really fits. So I hold it at the end and just kind of scribble around. I don't have a lot of control over the pen, but that's there's a purpose for that. So, so I am very serious. You don't have to know how to draw to make some cute things. So if you can make a U, here's a little U, and then I close it up at the top. If you can make some boomerangs, like do this, just a couple of boomerangs. If you can make just a blob, I call it like an amoeba, blo amoeba blob, like that, and like a straight kind of scraggly line, you've got a flower pot that you can paint. Very simple, very fun. That's all there is to it. It's just the you, a couple of boomerangs. I might put another one over here. And then a blob for the flower. And then you can paint that. Uh, another couple of shapes we're going to do is just, I call these kind of, um, well, it's a leaf shape, but it's just like a pointed oval. You do an oval with that. But it's really important to hold your pen at the end so that you don't, you don't want your flower pot to look like this. Because that's, that has no character. It's just, uh, that's not even a good flower pot. It has no character. It's much more interesting to have these squiggly, wonky lines that kind of draws your eye into them. You're not just looking at a straight line, you're just looking at very wonky kind of lines. So that's how we're going to get started. This is, we're gonna start working on one and do like the first layer. It's gonna be like an assembly line here of making postcards. We're going to have some drawing time in between and then we're gonna jump on the next postcard. So let's get started. So I have here some, I think this is cad yellow. This is alizarin crimson. This is cobalt. This is sap green. This is opera pink, which is very, very bright. That's this one right here. Very, very bright. It's a considered um, a fugitive color, which means that it's going to fade in sunlight. But I figure my postcards, when I mail them to people, I don't think they're going to end up in the Louvre or a museum somewhere. <laughs> sit on someone's mantle for a couple of days and, and maybe get thrown in a drawer. So I'm, it ha, it's such a beautiful, bright color. And then I've got some Windsor Violet here. Over here, if I get crazy, which I off, often do, I've got my Core Mini palette, which has such a beautiful magenta. And that magenta is the one over here. And I really like that magenta. It is really pretty. I've got some washi tape here. It's just some sticky tape that if you don't have it, don't worry about it. I'm just going to show you what you can do with this. That makes kind of a fun postcard or a little small painting. So let's get started. So I'm just going to turn this away and start with my first little postcard. This is like six inch by four inch. And I'm going to do just very similar to what I just did. I'm going to do a U, a very kind of squiggly you. I'm going to add a couple of boomerangs. I'm going to do a big blob and then a line down to that. Very, very simple. And what I'm going to add to this, which I think makes um, postcards and any kind of um, line and wash more interesting, is I'm going to do a line around it to fill in with the flower sticking out. I think that always makes it look interesting. 
So still with the squiggly line or holding the pin like this, I'm kind of going through like this. Is everyone with me? So far. Everyone's with me so far. Okay, very, very simple. Just a simple U, a couple of boomerangs, a blob and a squiggly line, and then kind of a frame with the little bit of the pot and a little bit of the flower sticking out that makes it more interesting. I should have brought the pot a little lower down here since this card is, is um, a portrait, but anyway, that's okay. So I've got my paintbrush here. So let's paint the background first and pick a blue color. Doesn't really matter what color you pick. I'm just picking blue and I'm just gonna make it. And I'm not worried about staying within the lines. I'm not gonna worry about that. This is not, I mean, if people want perfection, they can take a picture. I think the, the charm of watercolor is that it kind of does its own thing and it doesn't have to be perfect. There it is. We've done the background. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some pink. I think I'll use this opera pink here and make the flower. And I'm just squiggling my brush. You see, I'm holding my brush actually kind of far away from the, the ferrule just so that I have less control because it doesn't need to be perfect. And it's gonna touch some of the blue and it's gonna bleed through, but it doesn't matter. That gives it just character. It makes it prettier. I'm gonna get just a little bit of the yellow. And if I'm going too fast, y'all say, hey, slow down. Little bit of the yellow, I'm gonna just drop it in the center. Diane, just a smidge too fast for me. Okay. Yeah, you're kind of fast for me too. Yeah. No just, worries. Okay. I, I, was, I was gonna I was gonna say I'm the Parkinson's one though. We talked a little bit before. So I didn't know if it was too fast for me and but that makes me feel better. No worries, no worries. Okay, I'm gonna slow down, let y'all catch up a little bit. So I did I did the, the pink here. And then I took the yellow and I just dabbed it in the center. And as you see, the, the yellow is bleeding into and mixing with the pink and making a really pretty center of the flower. Okay, I'm going to switch to gallery view. Just if y'all want to hold up what you're doing so I can take a look. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, Sandy, I really like that. I like how that red is just kind of spread out. That's really yeah. awesome. Oh, Nesma, that's so pretty. Diana, we can't see yours because you have your background up. Your background's interfering. That's it. Nope, no, there. <laughs> okay, so now that I've got the background, the blue, I've got the pink and then the ye yellow of the flower, the very center, I'm gonna grab a little sap green here. And this is just a size six round brush here. And I'm going to just do some leaves. I'm not worried about the lines. In fact, if there's some white showing, I think it makes it look pretty cool. So I've done my two boomerangs and let's see what color I want the, the pot to be. I think I want the pot to be purple. So for the pot, the vase, whatever you want to call it, we want to leave a little bit of white on it. So I'm going to assume that the sun's coming from this right side. So I'm going to do it over here, do a very skinny line here, and then make sure I leave some white. That's for the shine. And then I always grab a little bit more of the color and I will dot it in on the dark side just to give it more shading. And this postcard is done with stage one. We're gonna add a little bit more later, but for now, we're going to push, put it aside and let it dry. If, if y'all haven't been painting too long, even if you've been painting a long time, you know how difficult it is to just let it dry. 
I like to fiddle with it. Like right now I see some things I want to add. I'm like, no, Diane, step away. Because if I start adding stuff to it, it's going to create blooms, which is fine. Blooms are fine. I mean, this is a bloom. Why not have a bloom within a bloom? <laughs> so, but um, it's, it's important to just let it dry. Another trick I want to show you is that since I added this, um, this extra pigment over here on the left side, I can let gravity help with that and hold it up at an angle so that the pigment all comes down towards the dark side of the, the shading of the vase or pot or whatever it is. I use gravity all the time to move. See, it's already, it's hard to see here. It's got a darker line here. So I'm gonna hold it up for another couple of seconds and then lay it flat and then it'll be darker on this side. It'll have a real interesting um, shape to it. So this one is going off on the pile, or not, don't stack them, but off to the side for it to dry. And then we're gonna work on another one. Is everybody with me? I think so. It's not okay, quite, have, but that's okay. Not quite? Okay, this one I will do a lot slower. Just a lot slower. So this one, I'm going to do three U's. We're going to have three kind of tall vases here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Perfection is overrated. It really is. I really like the, the wonky look of things. And then I'm going to do, let's say, like three little tulips. So it's just kind of doing a U up here and doing, don't make them identical. And then we've got us a little stem coming down. Very, very simple drawing here. And then again, I'm going to have the line. I really like having... a line going around, it kind of frames it. And then we've got our three tulips in these tall vases with the tulips sticking out. So is everyone with me so far? Let me know if I can go forward, move on. The problem child's ready. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay, so I'm going to, again, do the background first. And you don't have to pick the same color as I pick. You could pick yellow for the background. It doesn't matter. I, I the blue. I just really like the blue for background. So here I am going around. Doesn't have to be perfect. You do realize that for those of us that tend to paint photorealism, that doesn't have to be perfect is very challenging. It is, it is. <laughs> These are just happy cards. They're, they're brightly colored. They're free, they're loose. They're just, I mean, if someone sent me a card like this, I would be so excited. Just, it's just, I love happy art. Okay, so for the flowers on these, I think I'm going to pick some magenta here. And it's, if I touch the blue, that's okay. It's just going to make it more interesting. It's going to bleed a little and I've got a couple of splatters up there, that's okay. This is gonna be so pretty when we're done. It's bleeding a lot. The, the core watercolors that I'm using for the magenta, core has a different binder than, than the normal gum Arabic. And it, um, the, the binder is called Aquasol and it really moves. So whenever you use core on wet on wet, that color is really gonna travel, which can be a good thing if you want it to, which I, I love that. Or if you don't want it to move fast, then you have to be a little bit more um, controlling of it. So for the vases here, I think I'm gonna do a green vase. 
And you could do three different color vases. And again, I'm going to just sort of go around it, but I'm gonna leave a little slither of, sliver of white on each one just to show the shiny spots on the vase. Hey, Diane, can I ask you a question about your black pen? Does that ink bleed? If it, if it sits, um, dries for 30 seconds or so, it does not. Okay. Is yours bleeding? Yeah, I have a Pilot V5, which is my favorite pen to write with, and I've never used it like this before. And man, if I, it, it, does, it seems to bleed a lot. That, that's okay. I've lost a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I, I, it, it'll just make it more interesting. Or you can do their drawing and maybe wait a couple of minutes before adding paint to it. But I don't I think I don't. Ideally, I was just gonna say, ideally when I do line and wash type things or I want to use ink. I'm usually trying to look for a pen that's a permanent pen, um, just so that it doesn't bleed. Um, right. I discovered early on that even Sharpie markers will bleed, even though they're permanent, if you do them too soon. So yeah, you gotta let them dry. Gotta let them dry. So it, you saw what I did here is I put some dots of paint. I just kind of dotted my brush down and I held it at an angle so that that paint sort of stays on that side of the, um, the vase so that it'll be darker on the left side and you've got the little white dot or the white um, spot on the right side. Now see, mm -hmm. isn't this just happy? Do you look at your art and say, oh, that's just so happy. This is stressing me out. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this isn't supposed to do that. <clears throat> I think after we do it a few times, it'll feel better and all that. But yeah, I feel y'all. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, but I think this, I want to learn how to paint like this. I love the look. I do too. And, and it, it took me a while. I mean, I'm not great at this loose kind of thing, <laughs> but I'm trying to get better at it. And like right now, I want to do some things to it, but I need to just <laughs> let it go and let it let watercolor do what it wants to do. It wants to blend, it wants to spread, it wants to do its own thing, which is perfectly fine. I actually like the, the way the pink has bled through here. When this dries, we're gonna add another layer of pink just on the flower. So it's gonna look really cool, like it's a little halo of the flower. I think so it I'm looks like it's reflecting on the background, which is Oh cool. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. maybe it's in front of a window or something. Mm -hmm. Especially with the light on your vases, yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna, sw I'm gonna switch to gallery view. Y'all hold up. Oh, Nadine, that's pretty. Hold it back up again. Thank you. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, I, oh, Robin, I love the use of orange in the background. Oh, so pretty. Oh, this is just such, ooh, Denise, I love the purple. Oh gosh, I love the yellow in the background. You've got the, the complementary colors of purple and yellow, so those, faces stick yeah. out. Barbara, that's so pretty. Oh, these are Sandy. Oh, no. These are so happy. So y'all can't be stressed because look at the happy art that you're creating. Guys, I, I have to go and feed wild horses. So I will catch up with you soon. So okay. lovely seeing everybody. Thanks. Lovely seeing you, Fee. I said your name right. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Today was the first day that Fee and Diane and I have seen each other all in the same place at the same time. Yeah. So it was very fun. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. And we've worked together for over a year with the group. And uh, yeah, this is just, this has been we, a treat. And we talk every day, many times a day. So it's not many that. times a day. <laughs> yeah, we have a chat box with the three of us that it, we are constantly talking back and forth and, hey, did you see this person was rude? Let's kick them out. So we're very, we make sure that people behave and are not mean to each other. But I'm excited because in May, I'm going to get to meet Laura in person. We're both taking a, a workshop in Savannah, Georgia. And I'm really excited in September. I haven't got the dates yet, 
that I'm going to be visiting um, Fee and, and I'm traveling to London. I'm going to get to stay at her house for a few days and we're going to paint and walk in her little village. She lives out in the countryside outside of London and I'm so excited. And that's Nasma, how you're fine. I want to meet you, Nasma, while I'm there. Art tour. Definitely. When are you coming here? It's sometime in September, probably yeah. mid to late September. Okay, great. I think we should get a group of the folks in the London area and we should get together and, and meet and paint somewhere. How fun. Okay, I'm going to set this one aside and then I'm going to work on another one. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to slow down. So this one. I thought Texans always talked real slow, but you're breaking the mold there. I know, that's true. I, I, I don't know why. Okay, so I'm going to do, um, I think they're called cone flowers. I'm not quite sure if that's what it's called. So I'm going to do an upside down U, and it's going to be scraggly, it's going to be wonky, and that's okay. And then I'm just going to make some little shapes for some petals. I'm not worried about perfection. And if y'all knew me, I'm a perfectionist, so this is a challenge for me. And then I'm just going to do a little stem down here, and that's my flower. And again, I really like doing the frame around it. It gives it a place on the paper. And I'm going to do a blue background, no surprise there. And I'm not worried about staying in the lines. When I was a little kid in elementary school, on the coloring books that we had, I mean, I was so careful because I'm a perfectionist. Like, I got to stay within the lines. And I was really good at that. But it just doesn't matter. If you get anything out of today, get the phrase, it just doesn't matter. Remember that one. <laughs> Diane, so, maybe you could talk a little bit about the um, the washes that you had prepared, kind of what the water ratio is to the pigment. Oh, okay. So for the the paints, I squeezed a little bit out of out of the tube for this, and I use I think these are called pipettes. Mm -hmm. They have that you can put them in clean water and then drop some in there. Um, I guess the I need to add a little bit more blue here because I'm running out. The water to paint, I kind of, I didn't really think about it while I was doing it. I just mixed it up and I, oops, I added some pink got in there, or some green got in there. I mixed, I imagine this is what they would call tea. Mm -hmm. you know, some people say tea, cream, milk, um, coffee, um, the thick, the viscosity of the, the paint, I think this is probably considered tea. It's pretty thin. It's pretty watery because we're going to do, um, we're going to add a couple of layers on it. You don't want it, if you're going to be layering, you don't want the paint to be super thick because then the transparency of watercolor just completely gets lost and things will start to look chalky and kind of cakey. Did that, did that answer your question? Did that help some? I think I just want, I mean, when I asked it, it was more just for everyone's benefit about, because sometimes right. when, you've, when, it, when you've already got it done, then it's hard to see that piece. So that just kind of helps people know where you started. Yeah, and, and sorry about that. I didn't, I thought about doing it where y'all watched me, but that would take a little bit more of time. time. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So for this cone flower, and I think that's what it's called, mm -hmm. I'm going to do a little yellow on the top. And I think I'm going to use, let's see, I'm going to use some of the opera pink for the petals. 
And some of the yellow, I mean, some of the upper pink is going to end up touching that yellow of the top of the flower. And that's perfectly fine. In fact, I'm going to put a little dot at the top of each petal so that it does bleed in to the top. You see what that's doing there? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna switch to gallery view so I can see everybody's. Oh, that's so pretty. Robin, that's pretty. And uh, so delicate. Oh, that's so, Diana, that's pretty. Barbara, y'all are doing so great. Such happy art. <laughs> oh, Nazma, that is, that's really pretty. Love it. I love how the, the petals are, Mary, oh, Mary, that's really, I love the background you chose, Mary. What color is that? Mary, you're on It's a mix, room. yeah, it's a mix between cobalt blue and cerulean blue. Oh, hmm. it's so pretty. Okay, so this one, we're going to just let it dry. Put it aside. I'll wait just a minute here for y'all to kind of catch up and get your petals done. I really like this. I love the cone flowers. Denise, I like yours. Oh, Robin, I like the colors you did with that. That's actually a color of cone flowers. I've seen them like that. That's the one I have growing. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to do some tulips. I'm going to do three little tulips, not in a vase, a little bit different. I fight the realism thing too. I know, it's, it's, it's a struggle. It really is. Okay, so I'm going to start with a petal up here, kind of on the left side. And I'm not being, as you see, this is not a photorealistic tulip at all. And I'm okay with that. Here's another one. Just, just do kind of some squig squigglies and then do one here. Not worried about any of, and I'm gonna do some, <clears throat> some stems here. Kind of angle that stem off to the side, maybe make these a little longer, doesn't matter. And then again, I'm gonna make a frame around. And there you have three tulips that are just waiting for some color. So I'm going to do, had to mix up a little bit more blue here. Blue again, doesn't have to be blue. Use whatever color you want. I'm really enjoying this. Thank you, Dan. Oh, I'm so glad yeah, someone's too. not stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't want to stress anybody. So on this, I think I might do three different colors of tulips. Let's see, I'll use a purple over here. And I'm, I touched the blue on purpose, so a little bit of it would bleed out, which is perfectly fine. I'm gonna do a magenta one in the center. I'm still on my background color though. Just That's okay, that's okay. And let's see, I'm gonna use an alizarin crimson. You could do them all the same color. I just decided to do these three colors. And I'll just sit here and, and wait for y'all to kind of catch up. Um, I really, I like doing these simple postcards. A lot of the times when I'm thinking about, or I, sometimes I get unmotivated. I'm like, I don't know what to paint. And maybe I'm in a funk, I'm in a bad mood or whatever. It, it's just like, I don't really want to jump in and do something super complicated. I just need something kind of stress-free and easy. That's when I do a lot of small art things. I just, I just want to put paint on paper. And sometimes I just will mix, mix colors 
and create, um, let's see, this is one that I was just mixing colors and just playing around. And I think that, you know, if I added some ink to this or something, it could probably be considered um, some abstract art with a little of the yellow and the pink coming through. Who knows? But it, it's just helpful to do just some easy, stress-free, colorful painting where you just don't worry about anything. You just let it do, let the watercolor do what it wants to do. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside. And let's, I'm gonna switch to gallery view. Y'all hold up what y'all have got done. I wanna see your three tulips. I've got this. Oh, Nadine, oh, I, I just had, I just had an accident. Thank you. Uh oh, there are no accidents in art. No accident. <laughs> Mary Phillips, yours is so loose and wet. I love it. Mary Bailey, oh, that's so pretty. Barbara, oh my goodness, these are all so pretty. Denise, Nazma, gosh, this aren't y'all having fun? Fantastic! It's really fun. Okay, um, awesome. Yeah, it's really can awesome. I ask, can I ask a question? Yes. How do you get your background? Um, is your paper wet or how do you get your paint to spread so smoothly? Mine does not go like and that. And quickly. Yeah, that's yeah. a great question. Yeah. Okay, so the I have a lot of paint mixed up already. I think that's a huge important piece to be have a smooth wash is to have enough paint. If you're constantly mixing the paint up as you go, the yeah. water to paint ratio is not going to be consistent across the, the entire wash. Okay. Um, so just have it mixed up. So when I did, I don't know if y'all saw the, the tulip painting that I did mm -hmm. um, with the glass bowl. I, I'm so, I was so excited that I did that. I actually used these little miniature pie plates to mix up my paint so that I had enough paint. Because the, the mm -hmm. teacher on that class, Sue Warren, who is just phenomenal, you know, she said, there are so many mistakes that are made when you're adding, you're, when you're having to mix color up in the middle of um, trying to do a wash or add glaze or something because you can't get the water to paint ratio to be the same. So she always okay. recommended, you know, getting these bigger bowls and um, um, make sure you have enough paint. Oh. And every time I would mix up some paint to do to work on the um, the purple iris one that I did a couple of weeks ago, she would come by and look at everyone's paint. She goes, "That's not enough." And I'm like, "Seriously, this is like half the thing is full of paint. She's, it's not enough." We were also working on um, half sheets, so they're they're pretty big. But um, I kept mixing up more paint, and she said, "When you mix up too much paint, that's a good thing because what you do at the end of when you're finished with that color." She pours it in, which is what this one is. She pours it in a different bowl and it mixes and all the colors go into this and then you've got a perfect black. Mm -hmm. And so this is already <laughs> dried. This is already already dried. So uh, all I need to do is, is to reconstitute. This, cool. this was just mixed with all the different colors and then I've got the perfect black. Okay. Rock and pull. That's awesome. It's very practical. Yeah. It just, it's just dried up paint in there. And then when I finished with this today, I'm going to dump these all into here and just feed my black bowl. Maybe I should call it the black hole. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Seymour. Feed me Seymour. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh my gosh. Little shop of horrors. So Vanda, one other thing too about your question is always keep a wet edge so whenever you're painting yes. a background a wash you know you want it as much as possible you want to paint fast as fast as you can but you also want a wet edge that you pick up with each stroke each next stroke so if you were just going to practice that on a blank piece of paper only doing a wash you would start at the top make one stroke across with plenty of paint and as you come in to do your next stroke, you're going to come just below it and you're going to pick up that bead that's there and go the opposite direction and you just go back and forth. Whenever you go back into an area you've already painted, 
on a wash, you will get streaks and blooms. Right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> that I that makes more sense. Thank you. Yep. Can I, can and I then clarify last, something? Yeah. And then one other thing I would just add too is paper makes a big difference. We talk about that a lot in the group. And so what kind of paper you're painting on means your washes will be different. So you need to practice with what you normally paint with to see what what works the best. Okay. That makes it's, sense. Cotton paper? Cotton paper is always better in my estimation. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. It makes, you know, it, to me, it makes the biggest difference in any <clears throat> other. You could have cheap brushes. I mean, th this is a cheap brush. I've got some brushes here that are like $3. And um, give me a cheap brush and cotton paper any day. <laughs> But you'll find there's a variety of cotton papers out. And because cotton papers have sizing in them, depending what the sizing is like and the quality of the paper, you'll get different results even with cotton paper. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Earlier when you were saying like to pick up the, the color, that's just in a wash, right? That's what I was hearing. Yeah. So when you're doing a wash, like a background wash. Right. Uh, picking, it's called picking up the bead. There's probably okay. another technical term for it. But if you have your paper at a very slight angle when you're doing that, your paint that you've just applied will gather as a bead. If you have so much water and paint on your paper that when you tilt it up to say 15 or 20 degrees, the bead breaks and runs down your paper, you have too much. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Laura. Any other questions? <clears throat> just a comment, listening to this and just being here, I'm learning so much. So thank y'all. <laughs> oh, I'm Good. so glad. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the very first one we did here. It's, it's completely dry. And how you can tell if something, I hope it's completely dry, is <laughs> what I do is I put my <clears throat> the palm of my hand on a dry piece of paper. And then I put the palm over where the, the paint is. If the paint, if, if it feels the same, then it's dry. If it feels cooler, if the paint area feels cooler, it may look dry, but it's still a little damp. So just leave it alone until you feel the paper here feels the same coolness as the paper there. That's it great tip that I learned. I, I don't know who I learned it from, but that's real important because I would look at it. When it's super wet, you can move it around in the light and you can see it's glistening. You're like, okay, I know that's wet. But there is that in-between stage where it looks like it's dry, but if you put a paintbrush all over it, it's going to start blooming and pushing that, that almost dry paint away. And then you're going to have a bloom or you're going to have things happen that you don't want to happen. So for this little flower, what I'm going to do, and this is the second pass at this watercolor painting, this little postcard, is I'm going to do a little wet on wet. So I'm just going to take a damp brush and just go over the entire flower with water. That's all I'm going to do. Just go around the whole flower with water. And then I'm going to get some magenta. You could do whatever color you want to do. And I'm just going to dot in. You see when I dotted that in, how it just spread out? I'm just dotting in the very center. <clears throat> just dotting in this pigment in the center and letting it spread. And by doing that, it creates a little more realistic look of the flower. It's giving it more values, more shape. It's darker in the center. And if I really wanna shake things up, I'm gonna get a little bit of this yellow and dot it right in the center and it's gonna push away a little bit of that pink paint. I don't know if y'all can see that, what it's doing. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit, it's, it's pushing it away. And to give the, the vase a little, or the pot, whatever that is, a little bit more um, shape and form, I'm gonna take a little bit of the, 
the purple and do a little purple just on the left side, just to make it darker on the left side. And that's all I'm gonna do. Y'all see what I did there? I did one stripe down of purple. I'm gonna leave the right side completely alone. It'll make it darker on the left. And then for the leaves, just to give it a little more interest, I'm just going to do another boomerang there, just once. I'm not worried about it going over everything because I want it to actually look like two different values. And I'm calling this one done. I'm gonna make do my little signature here, Damazi. And the reason I do Damazi is I've got a long last name. And when I was trying to figure out what, how do I sign my paintings? I do not want to put Diane Zimmerman or D Zimmerman. That last name is just so long. So I just decided to use the first two letters of my first, middle, and last name. And Damazi sounds like a famous artist. So <laughs> I like maybe it. Maybe one day. Like one day. Okay, so this one is finished. If you want, um, I'm a huge fan of splattering. Um, so if you want to do that to kind of add a little bit to the end, I've got a little bit of yellow paint here. I've got my finger here, my brush, and I'm just going to tap. Just a little tap. And it gives it just a little fun. You've got a little yellow here. You can't really see it too well, but it's in there. Just a little yellow tap. Okay. Let's see, what was the next one we did? I think we did this cone flower. So this second layer of the second pass on all these postcards, we're just giving it a little bit more value. So we're gonna be Diane, using- the, yes. the cone flower was the last one you painted. It was? So it may not be dry. Mm -hmm. Okay, what was wasn't the it, Wasn't it the tulip one like that? Was it the three tulips? I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, this looks pretty dry. Yeah, thank you, because I would have mm -hmm. messed that one up. <laughs> okay, so we've got this really neat <laughs> halo thing going on. It does kind of look like a reflection. That's really kind of cool. So I'm going to get a little bit more of the magenta. And I'm just going to put a little bit at the bottom of each tulip. I'm not worried about too much. And then I'm going to, it's easier for me to turn it upside down to work with um, smoothing the edges. And how you do that is you take a damp brush and I always, when I dip it in the water, I will dab it on a towel. This is a wristband, like playing tennis, a sweatband. These things work great. I tap it so that it doesn't have too much water. And then I just barely touch that edge and then it will smooth that edge so you don't have a hard line of paint. And I think this looks a little too wimpy. So I wanna add just a little bit more pink just to the bottom. There we go. So I'm just tapping it. I do a lot of just tapping my brush. I probably do more tapping than I do painting. <laughs> just, I tap it. And then for the vase, I'm going to just add, just to give it more form, I'm gonna add another, a little stripe of the dark of the green, just on the left side, down all three. And this one is done. When it dries, the, the little dots I made in the, in the tulip up there, they're just going to kind of spread out and it's just going to look, it's gonna look kind of cool. Now, is this happy art? Definitely. Yes. Very happy art. That's just really kind of pretty. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next one, was it the next one, the three tulips? Yep. Okay. So again here, I'm going to, right now, it's still, it's happy art. It's pretty. You've got pretty colors. The background is pretty. It, it has a good feel to it. It's very loose. 
but we're going to intensify it a little bit by just adding a little bit more color for the tulips to make them stand out. So I think I used alizarin crimson on this first one. No, 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 kitty, kitty, kitty. So I'm not, I'm not gonna go all the way to the end. I'm just going to put it sort of towards the base, the base of the tulip. And I've got my pink here. <clears throat> I brought my brush. That happens quite often. And then put a little bit more purple here. And then I'm going to add a little green stem. This will really make it pop. And this one's done. Very simple. You can smooth this out if you want it, if you want a smooth edge. I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. Just let it dry. Happy art. Y'all are making happy art. Okay, I think the cone flower, are we up to this one? I think so. So again, I think I used the opera pink on this one. So I'm just going to kind of put a dot at the very base of each petal of this opera pink, because it's always going to be a little bit darker at the base. And then I'm going to add, do some yellow on the top of the flower here. And I'm going to make sure it touches the yellow or the pink so that it can kind of bleed in together. I'm going to use gravity. I always use gravity a lot. Just kind of move things around. I like how it all mixes around. Some of the yellow got in the flower and that's perfectly fine. It just makes it pretty. If you ever have um, where you think I want to lift something up, you can take a brush, rinse it off, and I dab it on a paper towel or cloth or something. And then you can kind of drink that up. That brush will drink up any excess paint that you don't want on the, on the paper. Or you can use like an edge of a tissue, a paper towel, just kind of touch it there and it just soaks it up. If, if that's what you wanna do. I like to just leave it there and let it do what it wants to do. Okay, let me see some of y'all's creations. Oh, Robin, I love that orange, the flower. That's so pretty, Sandy. Barbara, that, oh, y'all, they're so pretty. Here's they the first one. Oh, I love it. Oh, Denise, I love that first one with the boomerang leaves. I love the boomerang thing. It's just so easy. You just do a, a, a U, a boomerang, and a blob. I mean, anyone can draw a, a U, a boomerang, and a blob. Oh, those are, oh, Sandy, that first one is so loose and so pretty. Y'all are doing so great. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm going to do one last one. I know I said this would be about 45 minutes. We're running over some, but if y'all can stay, that's fine. If not, don't worry about it. But I wanted to show you, <clears throat> pardon me, this is a perfect thing to do for um, like a birthday card. So I'm just doing, and again, I'm holding my pen. I don't want to be perfect. I'm just doing a straight line. And I'm basically what I'm doing here is doing a cake plate. And I'm just doing a scallop thing. It doesn't have to be perfect. Perfection is overrated. And then here is my cake plate. And then I'm gonna take this washi tape or any kind of masking kind of tape you have. And it, if y'all don't have it, don't worry. Y'all can just watch this and then practice it later. And then put it on this to, to mask the side of the plate or the cake to make it easier to paint the cake and make a good shape. Okay, so now I've got the sides of the cake so I can have a very clean edge. Let's see, I want to use, 
some magenta. And I'm just going to go across and make a stripe of magenta. I'm gonna do another stripe. I'm gonna do another stripe. That's my cake. I'm gonna let gravity, you see what happens with gravity. You can make it go back and forth. I mean, I use gravity all the time. And I think I'll do blue for the center layers, but what that's going to do, it's, it's going to bleed in with the pink, which is perfectly fine. And it's gonna make like a tie-dye cake. It's gonna be really cool looking. I'd have a piece of that. <laughs> I know. I just dropped my brush again. I do that all the time. I, I know y'all don't care, but um, I ruptured my finger uh, last November. And you can see it's not fully straight. It's, it's So it doesn't really hurt that much unless it's going to rain. I'm like an old person. I can tell when it's going to rain. So I don't have really good... Um, control of it so I drop my brush all the time there's nothing I can do about it okay so I've done the cake I can move it around let gravity make things blend and then remove the side the tape and then look you've got a cake how cute it's how so cute. cute when this dries you can make a little candle you could paint the the base of the cake if you wanted but um, that's just a fun thing to do for, and you can write happy birthday at the top. You make your own cards. It's still Diane, bleeding and blending. It's going to be really cool. It's going to look like a tie-dye cake. I do have a quick question. Yes. You, you're, you're using washi tape. I've never used it. What, why can't you use masking tape or something like that? You can. Um, I like the washi tape. When I want a very, very clean wine, line, the, the washi tape is very, very thin. So it really sticks to the texture of the paper. So I can get, in my opinion, in my experience, I get really, really clean lines. Now, if I'm doing a big painting and, you know, a lot of people will tape it to the board like this and, um, you know, tape all the way around. Washi tape really can't handle a ton of water. So if you're doing this for a big project, the washi tape is going to eventually start coming up and you're going to get, you know, water's going to come underneath it. That's when I use the more stronger math tape. But to do small projects like this where I want very, very clean, precise, I just like the washi tape. It's very, very thin. Hey, um, and I think the other thing with washi tape is it comes off easily. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it rarely okay. would lift your paper. So if you're trying to use it in... It within the realm of your painting, as opposed to on your edge that's going to be covered up by a frame, it's a little less risky. Okay. I have Thank discovered you. this this 3M micro pour. It's metal tape. Mm -hmm. It's the paper tape that they use to. Oh, medical. Mm -hmm. And um, it's excellent. It it it. I I have put the wettest washes on, and it it does not come through. So it's great really? for, to, to, to tape your paper down to the board when you're going to do a really big. What, what kind of tape is that again? 3M micro pour. It's a medical tape, Diane. Oh, wow. It's the paper tape. So when you go and get your blood drawn, they do the yeah. pad and then the little, the little white tape on top of it. That's this. Really? Oh. And it works out well? Yep, and you can get it on cool. Amazon. Uh, this is a case I got on Amazon. Well, you're all going to be getting some now. It's just as reasonably priced if you were to buy one roll, uh, one large roll of blue painter's tape at the hardware store. Wow. Oh, wow. Really? I had no idea. They're smaller, they're smaller things, and there's like 12 of them in here, so I figure it's, it's got to be at least as much as a big painter's tape thing. That is know. so. That is so interesting. Um, I will have yeah. to check that out. Yeah, I was trying to find a, a, a painter's tape that would really work for a, for a wet wash, and they were all failing. And then I found this, and I had it in my drawer. And there it was. It worked fine. It actually worked excellent. 
Well, that's, that's interesting. I will definitely get some. So I added a candle, just very simple. I added a little purple for the, um, the base, the, the cake plate. And then this is now a birthday card for someone. Very simple. That Any so other questions? Love questions it. from no no more questions really. i hope y'all i i hope y'all found that this was valuable and and more importantly that it was fun and stress-free so which lady said that this was stressful because i want to see so are, <laughs> are you less stressful now you know when you you explained how to get the wash because i was not getting my paint to do what you were what i was viewing right. and it, sense now I was adding tiny bits of water at a time right. so I have lots of white and lots of lines in my background and so I wasn't getting that smooth transition <clears throat> so now I know where to go back and practice um, it makes sense to me now <laughs> yeah mix up a lot of things uh, yeah. that's really important and, and when you I, being loose is very uh, to me I'm trying too hard to make my loose look precise <laughs> <laughs> I hear you on that Me. one. <laughs> That's true. There should be a 12-step a, a program for us. <laughs> yes. But this is definitely out of my comfort zone. And I was so excited last night. I mean, I prepped my table. You have no idea, Diane, how excited I was for this today. Oh, but I'm so glad. That's out. awesome. Yeah, Me, too. Me too. When's okay. going to be the next class? I want, I want the next class. We will, I definitely will do more. I want to do, um, this was just more of a postcard fun thing. I'd like to do one where I, I take a little bit more complicated thing and walk you through step by step. I taught a beginner watercolor class at um, the Watercolor Art Society of Houston back in, in um, gosh, what was, I think it was October. It was a four week class. And I learned a lot about and these were true beginners. They didn't even know how to mix the paint. I mean, it, when they showed up and I asked what their experience level was, um, there was no experience. Uh, my oldest son actually attended the class too, which made me nervous. I'm like, geez, I shouldn't be, I, I taught him how to eat with a spoon. <laughs> so <laughs> really I can teach him how to hold a paintbrush, but it, was, it did make me a little nervous to have him there. But he did say I did a good job. Um, of course, he got all his supplies for free. What is he going to say? <laughs> but anyway, I learned a lot about what beginners struggled with and what I had planned for the class for the fourth week. I After that first week, I'm like, oh my gosh, I am never going to get these folks to be able to get to that last project that um, you know I had planned to do. And I got them there. It was it was so it was such so rewarding for me to see these folks go from not even knowing how to uh, hold a brush to creating a still life that was it was they just did such a great job. And I got a lot of satisfaction out of that. So I want to do more of that. So every one of the folk the folks in the class they walked away saying I can't believe I did that. And that's my goal to help others to paint something that they say, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. Because I've attended classes and I've had people help me. And we're at the end of the <clears> class, <throat> workshop, I, I said, I can't believe I did that. And it's because, you know, we all need help and we need some instruction. And, and I just, I enjoy teaching. I'm not a professional artist, but I'm glad to teach what I do know. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, we you're appreciate you teaching. Can I ask okay. one more question? Sure. So I've been, I watch tutorials and if it says it's a 20 minute tutorial, it takes me about five hours. But then <laughs> if I sit down to paint without a tutorial, I feel lost. So how do you transition to looking at your own photo and knowing where to begin? Okay, so I actually have a class for that. Oh. I taught it in person, and I leverage um, my iPad. Um, the class is called, I think, From iPad to Paper, of, of how to take a reference photo that you want to paint and how to get from the photograph to paper. And I use some different apps to help me dissect the picture. 
Um, I will share one of them here. I think I can do that and you'll be able to see. Um, so Diane, while you're sharing that, Vanda, one yes. other thing I would add is every time you do a tutorial, challenge yourself to take away one new learning and then outside the tutorial, practice that learning. Oh, okay. so yeah. practice it <laughs> two or three or four times until it feels more natural. Okay. So I really struggled with drawing ellipses, right? You know, the, like if you're looking at a glass and it has a <laughs> hole at the top of the glass, if you go search on the watercolor group and you find the bourbon painting that I just did, you will see that the glass that I painted was obviously a factory second because I cannot draw an ellipse. <laughs> and so what I was told is just keep drawing them over and over and over again because it's muscle memory. Okay. It is. And so I think that's true with any of the skills. So I've taken, I've only taken two workshops in my life. Okay. Um, both of them, like Diane described, I walked away thinking, oh my gosh, I painted that, which was quite shocking. And just for reference, I've been painting about two and a half years. So I haven't been painting super long. Oh. But when you, when you take a tutorial and you apply what you learned, even if it's a small part of it, and you make some notes on your practice paper that says, you know, I'm practicing this and you do it several times. And then you watch another tutorial and you do the same thing. You start to gather those pieces of knowledge. It's kind of like learning to read, right? You learn from a phonics perspective. You learn how to read the, um, the short vowels, the long vowels, the double consonants, you know, all of those things. It's the same thing with painting. Okay. And so then as you look at a picture that you have, you can go, oh, if I applied that technique that I learned, I think that would deliver this. Okay. Now there's lots of other pieces to it. And I think what Diane is leading up to here is that, you know, how to get your picture, but the piece about a tutorial to a, um, to your drawing, it takes time, but yeah. it takes practice most of all. Okay. Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> One, I hadn't been paint. I mean, I think about painting, but actually physically touching the paper is very seldom. So I'm wanting to make it more consistent, but I'm wanting to wean myself off of just the paint along. You have to do more than just do this, though, when you touch the paper. <laughs> you actually have to put a brush to it. <laughs> Diane, what are you going to show us? Okay, so... I think, I don't know if y'all saw the sunflower pictures that I posted in the group recently for folks to use. So this is a sunflower picture I did. And so let's say I want to paint this and I look at it and I'm like, okay, that's really pretty. I can easily trace, um, you know, the lines of the petals, but then I've got an app called a notonizer. And what it does is it, it converts a picture, a photo Ooh, some dog. <laughs> Somebody's dog. upset. <laughs> so I've converted this picture in, into a notan using three different values. And you can adjust it. You can make it darker, lighter. You can adjust however you want. So really the key to taking a reference photo or any still, any, uh, still life, anything you're looking at is to get the values right. So in this, I've selected three values. So I've got the really darkest ones around here and in the center. I've got the mid-tones, you see where that gray is, and then you've got the white. So it's, this helps me so much to know that, okay, as long as I get these values right, I mean, these, this light gray here, this mid-tone is where all the shadows are on each of those petals. If I can get those shadows right, then the flower is going to read like a flower. Okay, so it wouldn't even matter if the colors were the real colors, as long as no. the values are right? As long as the values. And a really good thing that I do all the time is I'll take a picture of my painting in progress and then I'll convert that to black and white. Oh. Because the colors can be confusing. It's like, okay, I need to see, does this work? And then when I convert mm -hmm. it to black and white, and then I look at the black and white 
um, of the, the reference photo, I can compare it and have a better comparison for the values. I'm like, oh, wow, I need to darken this area or, or this is too light. This is, you know, whatever. Um, it's a really good way to check your painting as you go along is to convert everything to black and white because it's really color doesn't really matter that much. It's values and shapes. Is this shape, th these shadow shapes, are they in there like this? If they're not, then I need to work on it and, and make sure it matches a little closer to this. But this notonizer, I think it was, I don't know if it was free or $1.99. I don't know what it was. I use this all the time. I use it for portraits, especially for portraits, because I'm not really great at painting faces. And you see all the shadows under the nose and uh, around the eyes. I can make someone beautiful look really ugly fast <laughs> in my <laughs> portrait painting. So I'm like the opposite of glamour shots. <laughs> Diane, anyway, do you have a value card handy? Um, I don't have it handy. Uh, I've got it in okay. my bag, but I do right, have a value fine. card. Yeah. So value card, you guys could Google that. Um, a value card is... Um, is basically what she's showing you on this picture from one to 10 in the values. So I think uh, one is the lightest and 10 is the dark. Oh, she's got it. There it is. I thought I... Yay, okay. So uh, in a workshop I took with an amazing guy, the one that Diane and I are gonna go to um, Savannah in May, he talked about the fact that when you're painting, not this style of painting, but in general, your painting should stay below a four for 75% of the painting as you're adding your layers. And you don't kick it up to those darkest values until the end. Now there's different styles of painting. Everybody does it differently, right? But mm -hmm. I have in the past taken, like Diane said, taken a black and white photo of a painting that I want to paint that was more complicated Actually, it's the one that just got into the show. And I literally took my value card and I wrote on the painting, on the printout of the draw of the picture, what values I read all over the picture. And that way, as I was comparing my value card to my painting in progress, I could look back at what I had read on my reference photo in black and white and say, am I there? Am I not there? Where do I need to go? So that was a handy way to do it. Um, I haven't mastered all the digital tools that Diane has. So I'm gonna take her digital class so that I can do that. Oh, it, it's, you can learn so much. And it, I, I only did it, I've only done the class once and the folks that walked away from it, they were, and it was a three hour class in person, but I could do it online. I mean, it's digital art. We, can, we should be able to do digital art online pretty easily, but it is one that I want to do. and. Because it really will be able to make you at least have a plan, how to plan your painting from, hey, this is a photograph of a barn. I want to make this on paper. Um, so I want to do one last quick thing here before I go. If y'all need to go, y'all just... So hey, I Diane, can, can I ask one, one super fast question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Note tonizer, like N, N like Nancy, O-T-E-N-I-Z-E-R. Yes, it is. I think it's A N. A N. Let's see. N O T A N. Hmm. Can y'all see the little yin yang thing there? That's what it looks like. Oh. No. <laughs> I will send y'all an email with the app name. Okay, that's great. good. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. So. I did this one last night when I was preparing for this. So I want to show you the lights kind of bright. Sorry about that. Um, there you go. So I did just the cone flower. I didn't use a pen first. I just did a cone flower, the little yellow part. I added the, the petals and then I added the bee. So the bee is just so much fun. So I want to show you real quick how you can do a bee. And it is so easy. So I'm just doing... Just a little bit of yellow for the body. I'm bringing in my black hole and I'm gonna kind of do the face. I don't know if bees have faces. I don't get you call it face. Kind of do some legs here. 
and then a couple of stripes. And then I'm gonna take a damp brush and I'm gonna just pull some of that paint to make the wings. I'm gonna add a little bit more dots of the black there. And when this dries, as it's drying, some of that paint is gonna kinda come out there and make the wings, which- Oh, look at that, it, I see it kind of moving. It's mm -hmm. starting to move, yeah. Get the shadow out of the way. Is that just too cute, little happy bee? Yeah. That's awesome. Just add it to a flower, and um, <laughs> there you go. It's just a lot of fun. I, I love having it. See, it's already starting to move some. And just let it let it go. Let it do what it wants to do. It's going to eventually, more of the paint's going to come up there on the, where the mm -hmm. water is. Because the, the thing about watercolor is it's, it's going to move. Wherever there is water, it is going to go towards it. So any other questions before we close the class? I got to run. Calculator. Just wanted to ask, Dan, do you kind of, I'm tempted to like, you know, do the, using a marker of the same Sharpie to outline these. Do you do that or yeah. do you just let you it? Can. You absolutely can. I didn't. I just outlined the um, the cake plate. But yeah, you could certainly outline it. It would be no problem. But if you outline it, my suggestion is to outline it not precise. Just kind of go over it. Because you're not doing precise art. Mm -hmm. It's it's happy art. See, like that. Fantastic. Great. Yeah. Thank See, you. This, yeah. this wing is starting to come into. Yeah, it's fantastic. Is it's the paper it. makes the difference also here? Yes, it does. Oh, I see a happy birthday. Oh, that's awesome. Did you paint that? I, I, hmm? I just did that. That is awesome. Nice. Oh, I love the bee. <laughs> that is so awesome. So my birthday is in August, so I expect to get a lot of happy birthday <laughs> cards. Happy, happy birthday cards. <laughs> yes. So thank you all for joining. I hope this was helpful. And, and like I said, I hope it was fun. I enjoyed it. I hope everyone has a great day. Oh, I like that. I see your bee see? next to the flower. Oh, that's so cute. Well, that was so, my flower that I messed up. So I, that's okay. The bee draws your attention, so you ignore the flower. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, y'all. Y'all have a great day. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 Nice yeah. to meet y'all. You too. Thank you. You too. Thank you guys.